Well, we are live here with the Emissary Publishing Podcast with my good friend and colleague, Paul. Paul, welcome to the Emissary Publishing Podcast. How are you today? Great to see you, Jason. Great to be back behind the mic for another exciting episode where we help faith-driven founders and business leaders tell them, spread the messages that matter. And we're talking t today we're talking with a, a dear, dear friend of mine. Uh, and uh, you talk about a guy who spreads messages that matter. Um, Femi Doyle Marshall and I got to know each other back in 2018. And we, uh, you know, I have watched him since then move, pivot from a, a, a mainly fitness driven brand into one of building and helping entrepreneurs take back their lives from the grind while still killing it and crushing it and making a profit. And he's done so well at it. In fact, uh, he's done well at it, but it, it's, it's a story that involves pain. Usually that's pain is, is the mother of innovation and, uh, or, or restructuring how you do things. And I, you know, I don't want to give away the details. I just want to say that the pain that he went through led to a breakthrough, uh, where now He's he's helping people to uh, build businesses that match what they what they really want out of life, and so it's a great uh, it's going to be a great conversation. I'm really looking forward to it. Me too, especially as a faith based entrepreneur, m multiple times I know the road of pain very well, uh, and there's there is something about the clarification the process that it is painful and the great benefits that can come from that. I've experienced them firsthand. I'm super excited to talk to Femi today. So let's bring him on the show here today. Femi, welcome to the Emissary Publishing Podcast. So excited to chat with you today. Thank you for having me. Like I'm actually super excited to be on this podcast. And um, like, like Paul said, we we're like super close. So the fact that I get to share a little bit of my story and, and kind of, can help inspire another visionary or many visionaries. I'm, I'm looking forward to it today. That's awesome. Great to be with you again, old friend. And, and uh, so pleased at, uh, to hear the latest and the greatest of, you know, where you've ended up and where your journey's taken you and knowing, you know, knowing being intimately acquainted with a lot of it going back, reflecting, you know, just for, for a moment on the, difficulty and the hardship and the numerous stories that you brought, you know, brought to the table every time we broke bread, um, makes, you know, makes, makes what you're working on now all the more satisfying. And, yeah. and that's really what I wanted to, you know, where we want to dig into today, because you've got a, you've got this book, the purposeful work week, and you can pick it up, uh, at, at on Amazon or web, uh, Femi's website, you know, wherever, wherever it's available. And on the surface of it, you know, it just looks like um, planning, right? Just, you know, organizing. But there's there's this this massive breakthrough story behind it. That's what I want people to hear. And before I get any further, I'll stop trying to uh, set the table and just let you let you let you tell like what where did this come from thunder paul <laughs> he's like he's setting me up nice no i that like there there's so much there um kind of like what paul said my background has been in fitness for as long as i can remember like you know i i was doing health and fitness coaching from when i was 16 that's kind of how i started i was training my teachers in high school and you know basically guy gave me that vision that that's what i was supposed to be doing like being straight up like like i at that time i had a horrible sports injury you know tibia fibula those of you that know anatomy was in half full leg cast six to eight months was in a wheelchair in school but i was pretty crazy from that age and i was wheeling myself to the gym doing pull-ups and my teacher saw it and then i ended up training my teachers in high school that's kind of like how my the first vision of you know, my first brand kind of unfolded from what God is telling me to focus on doing, built that brand really successful. But then I, I kept having this like feeling that, you know, you're just supposed to get out of the gym. Like you're not like you're supposed to be somewhere else. And I was like, no, I'm making money doing this thing. Like, what are you talking about? Like, no one's going to listen to me. I'm not a business coach, you know, and I, I kind of 
ignored that message and I ignored that voice. And that's actually how we connected, Paul, which is kind of crazy. So we kind of connected from me coming out of that. Um, and I was offering business coaching advice in the room around people, but I wasn't known as a business coach at that time, right? So right. I was literally coaching, advising, and consulting people for free. And they were, they were like making money, rebuilding their businesses, changing their life. But I was never being like, oh, I'm, I can coach people like this. I can do consulting like this. I was like, no, I'm in the fitness lane. Stay in your lane. Um, Fem, you were like, I was about, when, when you and I met, I was about to crater. Yeah. Like I had just been ripped to shreds in the hot seat in that mastermind that we were a part of. It was yep. good. It was a good shred ripping, right? That I, I mean, I deserved it. I didn't have anything. Yep. But I was like about to fall through the floor and you reached out and you gave me business advice. Like you were, yep, you were literally doing that. And I was one of the beneficiaries. Anyway, continue. And what's crazy about that is like, you don't really realize what's happening till later, right? So that one experience brought us here today, mm -hmm. right? Like that one experience changed the trajectory of everything you were working on from that point. But I would not have known that in that one conversation. Right. So I'm still like, oh, no, I'm, I'm going to just be a fitness pro. I'm just going to kind of be in this category and stay in that bucket, stay in that lane. Um, but then I always find God is funny. Right. Because you'll say something and then God will be like, mm, look over here. So uh, kept back in the grind, kept building the business. This is actually just prior to the pandemic now. Right. So I'm like, OK, you know, let's keep going. Let's keep grinding. Let's grow this facility. Let's get another facility. And I was literally about to sign a lease for another location. Um, and the pandemic hit. Mm, I remember that. The pandemic hit. And what was so crazy about that experience is I was rushing these people to give me the terms of the lease. I'm like, I need you to give me the terms of the lease so I can sign this thing. Give me the terms of the lease so I can sign this thing. They sent me the contract. I'm like, where are the terms of the lease? I'm not signing this thing. And they sent me the terms of the lease literally two hours after I found out all fitness facilities were shutting down. Mm. And I was like, that's why I didn't sign the lease. <laughs> okay. So where I was leasing at the time, it was going to expire in about a month. Um, <laughs> so I only had one month left to pay. And I was like, okay, what are we going to do from here? Um, and I'm jumping, like I'm jumping forward before this all happened. I was already being told, Femi, you know you're supposed to stop doing health and fitness coaching. Like, I ended up working so hard within that business that my blood pressure one day was 220 over something. Um, had signs of a stroke. Couldn't walk, couldn't talk, couldn't move. And I actually had a client rush me to urgent care hospital, and that's what was going on. That was like a year before all of this happened, mind you. And I, I like the message was, you need to stop working like this. I stopped working for four weeks. I couldn't work for four weeks and my business grew. So now this is a year before, okay? So I'm getting this message like, you need to change how you work. And I'm like, no, but I'm making money. But it's like, you need to change how you work. You're like, but I'm making money. And I was like, I don't know what to do. Then I wrote my first book, which is called Reboot, which is where Reboot X Academy came from. Um, I wrote that book. In 2018, so the same year we met, Paul, yep. <laughs> right? Remember. Um, wrote that, spoke it out in two days. God basically told me what to say um, and launched it in 2019 and sold out all of those books the second I released it. But now, once again, I was like, I'm a fitness pro. I'm not supposed to be talking about business and development and stuff. Like, So put that book on the shelf. Let's focus on training people year past pandemic hit all that stuff happens okay now what do i do i'm like okay so i can't run my fitness business and i'm still trying to hustle i'm like i'm gonna go online i'm gonna do lives i'm gonna do live zoom workouts i personally don't like doing that that's not how i coach people at the time um and my wife pulled me aside and she's like femi what are you doing <laughs> i was like what do you mean I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get this money like you know people still want it she's like femi like stop like act like you, I've seen how hard you've worked, and now it's a month past since the pandemic. She's like, I've seen how, how hard you've been working for the past month. You need to stop. Like, actually stop and pray. Mm. And I was like, I wasn't praying. Like, I actually wasn't praying because I was so angry and so focused on trying to do She's like, you need to stop and pray. And I'm like, all right. I stopped, and I remember I shut everything down for a week. 
And this is, I think, the time when we started talking again, Paul. I was praying every single day. I was like, you know what? I don't want to w- work eight hours every day. No. And I'm like, how many hours do I really want to work? I'm like, I want to work like four hours, you know, four hours per day. I'm like, okay, I want to work four hours per day. How do I change how I'm working? And I'm like, if I'm working four hours per day, but there's an eight hours per day is what most people work, maybe I should be praying more than I'm working. And I was like, okay, let's try this theory. So then I was like, let me not work four hours and pray four hours. Let me work four hours and pray five hours. And I was just literally playing worship music and praying and just, you know, thinking of what, like, okay, where do you want me to go? This wasn't even a weekend. Literally like the second or third day, I got a vision, which was to call one of our other good friends, Luis, Luis Diaz. And I call Luis and Luis is like, hey man, what's going on? <laughs> He's Olivia Luis. Hey man, what's going on? Amazing man for podcasting too. And I told him kind of what, what the message was. I was like, I'm not supposed to be working this way. And he's like, maybe you should like launch your stuff, like launch and go online and start like doing coaching, consulting. And that was it. So from that moment, invest in whatever programs I could at the time to learn how to start building online coaching businesses. Cause I was always in person, physical, always in person, physical. I was like, I didn't, you can really do this fully and not travel and, That was it. Like literally built Reboot X Coaching, which is what it was at the time. Reboot X Coaching, which came from my book Reboot, which I wrote in 2018. God told me the six steps in Reboot is supposed to be Reboot X Coaching. Then Reboot X Coaching evolved into Reboot X Academy. Then it grew into Reboot X Academy Entrepreneur Incubator. And then now we literally do like time management, business growth consulting. We work with organizations and entrepreneurs from like restructuring their entire schedule and life um, into a purposeful way. Like how can you make profit? How can you actually have time to experience the wealth you're creating in your business and not be tied to this thing? Like literally that was a conversation I have earlier today with another business owner who wants us to come in and work with clients for her. um, And we're working with their entire staff to restructure how their work week looks like. So it's kind of crazy to think that that came from <laughs> one conversation we had in like 2018 and it just snowballs into where we are today. So one of the things that's coming to my mind, you talked about this point where you were working, 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 depleting your strength. It sounded to me like, yep. and, and you also were praying and yep. I, and it's a common theme that I find with folks who are earnest you know, pe- people who have a faith and they're they're earnest in their faith, and yet also working, you know, working their butts off. And the the verse comes to my mind is, you know, they that wait on the Lord mm. will, renew, will renew their strength. Mm-hmm. And and I and I wonder, you know, couple this back into this this pivotal moment for you. Talk to me about the renewal of strength that was required and how that then changed how you work. Hmm. It's so funny because I was on a, on a, our client call for people inside of Reboot X Academy. We have office hours too. So I was like on an office hours call yesterday and we'll pull it up. We were just having a casual conversation and we referenced Habakkuk two verse two. Right. Um, And that write the vision. And make it plain upon table like like that how that really shifted my life and and the experiences and and the thinking of just what what you do tomorrow is influenced by the vision you see today right so i might have seen something like years ago and i didn't even tell you this paul but like literally what i'm doing now i saw it 10 years ago Mm. so i saw when i was 24 We met when I was 28, okay? So I saw when I was 24, Femi, probably 27, 24, this is what you're supposed to be doing. Mm. I was like, no, I'm I'm not skilled to do that. I can't, like, just, like, I'm not, I'm not worthy of this appointment. Like, you can't call somebody else, yeah. Yeah, go call, (laughs) like, this, like, come back to me in about 20 years. You know, maybe I could, maybe I could do this thing, you know? And I think the, the pain is beating the thing over his head over and over and over and you realizing you're not doing the thing you're gifted to be doing. 
-hmm. Like you're like choosing to use someone else's assignment when you know that's not yours. Like you know, like inside you, you're like, this is like, I'm seeing messages. I'm talking to people. Their whole life is changing. And I'm like, no, I'm going to stay over here instead. You know, and, and then after a while, what I find for me, my experience, my journey, what I've gone through is when I don't listen, the pain gets greater. That's for me. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it's for everybody. I haven't really had, you know, these conversations, but I feel like the more I do not listen, the more challenging aspects of my life and business become. And what's crazy is this literally happened today. I got a mess from someone like, hey, can you come in? and do a workshop for about 20 participants, I didn't even mention to this person that that's what we do. And I got an email just before this call. We were like, we got to pay you literally right now because the budget is ending and then you could do all the workshops next year. And I'm like, huh? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Like, what? (laughs) It's that alignment, I feel. Um, So again, like like when, but when... um... You know, the, the people who you aimed your book at. Yeah. Is that, is it, would you say like a lot of them, do you get to the point where they, you, you discover that they're having exactly the same problem, that they just don't have enough alignment and purpose? And, and so that's what's like exhausting them. And yeah, I, there, there was one of our clients who signed up in like February of this year. She's been with me almost a year. Her entire business and life turned around. She's saying like she's off for the next three weeks because she's traveling with her family. Um, they're gonna go to Universal. They're gonna have like the whole family vacation. Like everybody in her family. She's like, I've never done this in my entire life. Um, mm. But when when she came in, <laughs> she thought she was struggling with money. Like she actually she she thought she's like, you know what I, you know I don't know how to make money. I don't I don't like you know I'm not charging enough. And I'm like. What are you actually doing? Like, let's actually look at how's your schedule? Is this aligned to what you really want to do? And then we realized it wasn't at all. Like we had to eliminate her entire business model and rebuild it from scratch. And then that made her 10 or 15 extra business in like 60 days. You know Mm -hmm. what I mean? So I feel like a lot of the people that are in Reboot X Academy, they kind of they kind of feel stuck in one of two areas. Either they're stuck because they don't have time, like their time is completely gone. Like they're not even experiencing the, the growth and wealth that they've accumulated. Or they're stuck without the wealth mm-hmm. because they have no idea how to put this vision that God's given them into reality. It's like, yeah. like I see this mountain, how do I start climbing it? It's kind of like that mindset. and. Um, usually when they go through the entire experience, which is not easy because that's what you have to go through developing and growing and refining and the challenge and, you know, the evolution, um, they come out as a completely different person, like every single time Mm. I am no longer the same person I was in 2018. We know this, (laughs) like, you know, and and I, I can, we can talk about many clients who have the same experiences too. So, yeah. Jason, this reminds me of several um, conversations we've had just in the last 48 hours, right? About the client coming to you with the, um, I, I, have a, I have a pain in my shoulder and you say, well, let me listen to your heartbeat, <laughs> right? Yeah, well- the pain it, isn't actually in the shoulder. For sure, we as people uh, process that, those things that we can understand. And when we can't understand something, we assign the, the the meaning or the reason to the thing that we can't understand. And so often, and this is, I think, the, the reason why coaches are s- successful many times, is simply a, identifying a different perspective for an individual is super important because mm-hmm. they simply can't see the thing that you see. And, and they're making decisions off of the wrong information because they're they're making decisions off of the things that they can't understand, which, you know, when a company, uh, when when turnaround experts go into a company because it's failing, first thing they do is many times they fire the senior staff. Mm-hmm. And why? Well, the senior staff made the decisions to get them into that situation. 
And if they could have made different decisions, they would have made different decisions. And now it's too late. So you go in and redo the leadership. Now, with a small privately held business, you can't go in and redo the leadership. Uh, you, you know, you can't remove them because you remove the entire company many times. Uh, so instead, you go in and rework the individual and move o- open doors that they didn't know existed. You know, it's like the hidden door, you know, but as the experienced individual, it's like, well, you know, once you've seen so many houses, there might be a hidden door here. Uh, and, you know, it's like kind of getting out of an escape room almost, which yeah. I think many people, entrepreneurs, uh, founders, all of us in some ways find ourselves in these escape rooms. We worked ourselves into there because we are go getters and we're like, this is going to be exciting and fun. And then all of a sudden it's like, and now where do I go? You know, is there some, do I, do I move the lamp? Do I open the drawer? Is there a combination here? And we start working ourselves into a tizzy. When in fact, like what you talk about, Femi, is the answer is sometimes stop doing what you're doing and wait. That I Mm -hmm. think, so that's why I like working with faith-based founders and authors, because the first answer is stop. Yeah. Just stop. You, you're not, uh, you're not qualified to move, to move forward until God moves with you. And he's going to let you stay at that place and sit in the pain until you stop. You know, it's so funny you mention escape rooms, Jason, because I immediately flashed back about a year ago. Um, we, I took my sons and we were invited with a group of men to go to one of those escape rooms. And so stopping is very important and waiting is very important. And the third thing I would say is no, you know, when you, when we did it with a group, everybody found one clue. And then it all came together and we got out, we finished it with 30 seconds left. Everybody. So you have to spread that workload with people who think differently than you do, who are smarter at certain things than you are. Anyway, you were going to say something, Femi. I just want to get that in there. What What is crazy is the things that you both said is in direct connection to pages in the Purpose of Work Week book, mm. right? There was a conversation we had in the room with Sam, right? Who's author of that awesome book behind you. Yep. Um, and you were there and he said something. And I have to actually tell him that he's referenced, like I referenced our conversation in the Academy as to a section in the book. And it's called slow down to speed up literally like page 17. Like I'm looking at it right now. And it's, if you constantly are in this hustle mindset, like literally, like if you're constantly in this hustle mindset, you're not creating the space to build your business around your life. Mm-hmm. Like this, it is near impossible for you to actually understand what you're going to do because you're always on edge. You're yeah. always on the next project. You're always on something. So you need to slow down. And he said something that I want to tie into kind of pulling the pieces together, Paul, where there's a belief that I think a lot of entrepreneurs have where they're like, I can figure it out. Mm-hmm. And that's the stupidest thing. I got to say it like this, just to be like blunt. Like, if you could figure it out on your own, you'd be where you want to be already. Right. Yeah. Literally. Like, you would have you would have magically put the pieces together and you would solve every problem you have in your life and your business. That's not the case. You actually need counsel. You need mentorship. You need support. You need faith. Because sometimes you don't even have the answers. Yeah. And you need to believe that the answer is going to come from somewhere as to who you need to talk to, which has happened so many times in my life, in my business, where I'm like, I don't know what to do right now. Help me. God help. Like, just, just tell me who to talk to. Talk to this person. You talk to that person. You don't really think they'll have the answer. And then they tell you everything you were looking for for the last year in that one conversation. So yeah, like I swear being an entrepreneur is like being in a constant escape room, you know, you know, where sometimes you walk yourself into that escape room and you're like building the walls around you and you're like, this looks like a good spot. (laughs) (laughs) I saw saw a great interview uh, yesterday uh, with, uh, uh, I guess I call a friend of mine, uh, Jerry Colonna, who's a business coach to 
founders and entrepreneurs and um and uh he was being interviewed over over a over a certain topic i won't get into it i didn't want to i was like oh no i'm gonna go down a rabbit hole uh but the 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 interviewee came out and said the many times entrepreneurs are successful because they've got a bit of a chip on their shoulder. They have something to prove. It could be from their childhood, uh, from, you know, some growing up that they, you know, they were the unheard person. They were the person who had to prove themselves. They would come from broken homes, all sorts of things. There's some sort of energy that comes into play with many successful entrepreneurs where they feel that they have got to go make this thing work. Hmm. That is both their success and their downfall. And that's where this idea of I'm going to, I'm going to push as hard and as fast as I can and, you know, damn the consequences. That's a, that's a, you need that sort of fortitude to be successful in some cases. And yet sometimes that pushes you into the exact place that you should not be. Yeah. It pushes you to be on your own. It pushes you to, uh, to to separate yourself so far from the pack yeah. that you you now are going to get picked off by the lion, you know, because you're 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 supposed to be with your other group of zebras, uh, and and now you're off on your own, okay, so. and that's a problem. So the I, I I think that 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 speaks to and and can be balanced with, um, with this idea of faith and waiting. And sometimes uh, doing nothing is doing something, mm. you know, sun's the art of war, Yep. which is a, it's a timeless principle that sometimes doing less uh, gives us more. Yep. I want to actually say that example of the pain or the turmoil or the challenges of what you started with can fuel your growth. I kind of, I remember I was on a consulting call with, with one of our clients and I said, you got to observe what flame you're using. The energy, the fuel source of the flame, it looks different. And at one point, you got to decide if you're going to change that fuel. Like at some point in time, as you're building this thing, you're going to be like, I'm, I'm going to hustle, I'm going to grind, I'm going to build this thing, I'm going to build. But then at what point are you going to be like, no, nah, I want to I want to serve people. Like, no, nah, mm. I want to, I want to change this culture. I want to help people find freedom. I want like, like at what point are you, are you going to stay that way the whole time? Or are you going to switch to something that is more progressive and healing? And you know, like, cause the flames might look the same, but what it's doing to you on the inside is something completely different. Yeah. Right. And that's, that's something that I think is so uh, profound. Something I think entrepreneurs, particularly faith-based entrepreneurs should pay attention to the activity that I'm doing now, pay attention to the feeling and the out, the outworking of that, the fruits, let's say, yeah. which leads me to this idea of fruits of the spirit. So if it's love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control, how I'm working today, is that creating in me these mm. fruits? If it's not creating in me those fruits, then this is not this. I am working in my own strength, which no wonder I'm burnt out. No wonder I'm unhappy. No wonder people are unhappy around me. Yeah. Uh, because this is not who I should, this is who, not who I'm created to be. Mm. Yeah. I'm having so much fun right now. Like, there, like, like there, there is a point of what you're saying too, Jason, that I remember I was on a drive. I was driving my wife uh, 30 minutes out somewhere and I was looking at the energy I was using. You know the mindset, how fast I was talking, the you know, and, and and I had to really pause and check my own self and be like, what energy is this? And I had to change that entire tone, that pace. And the second I shifted that energy, clarity, understanding, focus. So we, it's easy to get tied up into this storm, and that's actually referencing from like my first book. You know, where you're in that storm and that chaos and that hustle and that drive like i gotta do more i gotta do more i gotta do more i gotta do more but then where's that more coming from yeah right like it has to come from somewhere 
Yeah. Well, and and when you were both talking about sitting still and knowing when the right time is, took me back to my understanding of that uh, that Hebrew word emunah, which we translate to the word faith. Hmm. And emunah means it, it is we get it's the root of words like amen, which we say at the end of a prayer. And it, you know, it, yes, you could use the word the the word faith to describe it, but really the a, a more apt phrase I've found that accurately translate what that word means is trust in action. And trust in action doesn't always mean doing things. Sometimes it means not doing things because the, the correct action here is to not do anything. You know what's I've crazy seen it about how many that? Times, you know? I was going to say, what's crazy about that, that's actually <laughs> everything we're saying in conversations. I know this is not a coincidence we're having this, this interview, right? Everything we're saying is actually in reference to pages I'm looking at in the book right now. Like I'm looking at page 76, intuitive action and the activity of trust. That's right. Like that's page 76. And I'm thinking of there are times in my life where you don't actually see a way out. You, you don't see it. Like you're like, there's no way for me to get out of this situation. Like I don't. I don't know how there's going to be a supernatural turnaround right now because I don't have the blueprint to this. Yeah. But I think having that faith, having that understanding, and actually taking action with that in mind, everything unfolds in your favor. This is actually a belief that I've had for many years. And I it just sometimes you forget just living life, right? I think when we go through the path of life, sometimes when you don't have communion, you don't have people you can lean on and be your anchors and be like, hey, you remember, this is what you said. This is where you're supposed to be. Mm -hmm. You might forget that everything works for your good. Like everything, like you might not see it right now. The struggle you're going through right now is going to create an opportunity for you to connect to the right person that will put the pieces of what you're looking for together and everything will go in your favor. Yeah. Um, who would have thought one conversation we'd have at a table in a restaurant, which translates to how many years later, two children, two different time zones, and we're here again. <laughs> well, we're on the same time zone right now because it's winter time. But in the summertime, yeah, we'll be able to do it. Well, we're we're winding down into our final minutes here on the on the emissary publishing podcast, and I this this topic that we're touching on, which I mean, it's lots of topics, right? But I think it's, I think it's very um, important, perhaps one of the most important questions an entrepreneur can ask or would be entrepreneur, the, 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 the hours of your life, the energy you're expending today, moving whatever ball forward for whatever reason. Um, it's not, it's not as though if we, if we can find some magical key, some magical lock, it all opens up. The road is clear ahead of us. We press on the gas. You know, it's Montana before they had speed limits. You just go. That's not true. No. Sometimes it's difficult. Uh, I'm I'm wondering if we can, as we as we wind this down, give give us Femi some some insight into how you figure out when it's when it's the I need to work through this and press on that door harder or I need to wait and uh and mm -hmm. and see what unfolds ahead of me how do you split gonna, that difference I'm gonna actually reference something I a message I received from one of my pastors years ago uh, we were in like a small group conversation and someone asked this question, they said, how do you know that what you're receiving, the message or things to do is from God? This was, this was, this was what was asked. And it was a brilliant question. It came out of like left field. I was like, I don't know. This is, I, I want to know this too. And what he said, he said, when after you do it, you find peace. 
and you feel peace. And I remembered that this would have been just before my first daughter was born. And it made me understand how this connects to the purpose of work week. So when you're using intuitive action and you're practicing the activity of trust and you've actually spent hours, not like five minutes, I mean like hours thinking of your vision that you want, and I call it your P2 KPIs for your personal and professional life. What is the KPIs you wanna see for these things? And you've spent time clarifying, refining, is this really what I want? Is it, and you know it, you'll be able to go on autopilot with how you're working after a certain point in time. So I'll be building certain aspects of my business. Like today, today I have literally nothing on my schedule, but then it filled up, filled up. Got a podcast episode. I got to go call this person who's going to give us some more money for next year. Like this came out of, I, I woke up, took my children to daycare. That's basically what my schedule looked like. When you start really taking time to know what is that end goal I'm shooting for, you'll begin to start looking at the work that you're doing and listening to what your body and your spirit is saying. Hmm. Sometimes you actually do need to stop. Because if you don't, you can end up with a stroke. If you don't, you can lose that relationship that you actually care about. If you don't, you don't have the clarity you need to execute on the next step that you can't even see. I took this entire week, and I'm talking, I'm going to go in right now. I took this entire week to stop for some reason ads are not converting the way that they were last month. I'm like, this is kind of odd. You know, bookings are not happening the way that they're supposed to. This is kind of odd. What, like what? I want to work. I want to work. But then I just stopped. Listen, got visions for everything I need to do for the next year. I'm like, okay, that's why you're telling me to slow down. Next step, everything falls into place. Opportunities are opening up. So listen to what you are supposed to be doing and don't be afraid to slow down because it allows you to speed up as well too yeah and and slowing down has an expiration awesome. date too just like speeding up does eventually if you slow down long enough the spirit will begin to tell you um time to, time go. to work time to go. Know. it's not forever none of these things are forever it's there's a season for everything yeah right Waxing so if you clients. if if you're aware of what season you're in, if you're being present, you'll be able to create that space you need to build the business the way you want to. And then you'll actually generate more revenue and you'll actually see the success you want to see in less time. Amen. Let it be so. Amen. It's good words. Well, well, Paul, you want to close this out? Let's do it. The, the guest is my dear friend, Femi Doll Marshall. RebootX.com is his website. His book is The Purposeful Work Week. Pick it up, read it, learn it, love it, live it. And we will look forward to seeing you next time on the Emissary Podcast, where we help faith-driven founders and executives tell the stories that matter. Bye for now.